Welcome back to the Bluegrass on this beautiful late August day. Now late August is one of my favorite times of the year for a couple of different reasons. Um, partly practical, partly ideological. Now on the practical side, what I like about late August is I know that when I wake up in the morning, the temperature is going to have dropped relatively low. Relatively low temperatures equals relatively high energy levels from the dogs. Relatively high energy levels translates into lots and lots of successful repetitions over the course of the day. So that's awesome dog training weather. Now, what else I like about uh, late August though, is kind of the fact that even though the temperatures start off a little bit low in the morning, they creep up and around 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, this gets pretty hot, hot enough to break a sweat. And I think that breaking a sweat every day at work is important because it makes you appreciate <laughs> when you get off work. You know, so you come out in the morning, it's a little chilly, you work your dogs, around lunchtime it starts getting hot, you break a good sweat, and then when it's about quitting time and you fix yourself that nice cold drink, it's like, man, mission accomplished. I've went out and I've done something. You know, you really feel physically like you've accomplished something. And for me, that's a metaphor for life. You know, you get up, you've got some energy, you go out, everything's working out pretty well, then there's some trials or some tribulations, but as long as you persevere, there's a big reward at the end. And that's kind of how dog training works, that's how a kid raising works, that's how your job works, and that's how living your whole life works. You know, in life, there's going to be some ups and downs, some trials, some tribulations, but if you do it right, if you follow the rules, there's a big reward waiting for you at the end. And as long as you always keep that in mind, then nothing will really get you down. Okay, so late August, if nothing else, these next few days when you wake up and it's a little chilly and then gets, it gets a little hot, just think about perseverance and think about living your life the right way so that that reward's waiting for you at the end. All right, what's on the agenda for today? We have two big adventures. Number one, we're going to take a couple of short hairs over to the farm and we're going to let them uh, kind of run around, get some environmental socialization. We're going to try to get them in the water. We're going to put them in a the john boat. We're going to put them on the kayak. And of course, you know, I'll take a couple of mentor dogs with me to encourage these uh, German short hair puppies to, to get out and, and, you know, really explore. Uh, not that they're going to need much encouragement because German short hairs are really outgoing dogs, you know, and they're really physical and really adventurous, you know, but it's always a good idea if you can to throw you a mentor dog in the mix, kind of keep the other dogs on the right track, keep them close, keep them from going too far, you know, so that's one thing. And then the second thing we're going to do is we have a Malinois and a German Shepherd, uh, both puppies, both around five months old, and we're going to take them on a city adventure, right? So we're going on one farm adventure and we're going on one city adventure. Now on our farm adventure, it's primarily uh, just an exercise in environmental socialization, right? We're just mainly going to kind of let the dogs learn by doing. On our city adventure, it's an actual exercise in, uh, you know, transferring our yard work or our formal training at the kennel into a real life, high distraction, dangerous environment. You know, we're going to walk along some roads and we're going to make the dogs uh, stay and, 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 you know, kind of make them uh, not cross the streets and just do other stuff that's very important for dogs that are uh, going to be in an urban environment. Okay. Okay. All right, let's go up here and see what you guys are up to. Come on, up, up. Oh, <laughs> very nice. All right, now here's my best advice before you go out on a big adventure. You need to sit down and make an honest and objective evaluation of where your dog is in terms of developmental stage and training progression. In other words, how mature is your dog mentally and physically? And how much work have you put into being able to influence your dog in new and novel situations? And listen, if the answer to either one of them isn't that much, right? It's like dog's not very mature or you haven't put a lot of work in, it does not mean that you shouldn't go out on a big adventure. It just means that you should set your expectations accordingly and you should be, a, be prepared to manage the dog in such a way as to keep it safe and to make the whole experience fun okay so in other words do not go on a big adventure with expectations that are not in line with your dog's physical and mental capabilities or the amount of work that you've put into it so we're gonna go over here to the small challenges course and I'm gonna show you how I personally establish these objective evaluations of dogs uh, as it relates to kind of what I expect when I go out on a big adventure Come on, dogs. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to start off with Pippin, a young German short hair pointer puppy that's been here, I don't know, about a week, maybe 10 days or so. And uh, what you'll notice is that, listen, she's not performing these exercises with a high degree of speed and precision. And I'm having to come in a whole lot and give her rewards to kind of keep her on track. You know, part of that is her age. Uh, part of that is just her breeding. You know, uh, German short hair pointers are bird dogs. And so, of course, you know, they're bred to go off and find things. You know, and this time of year, we got a lot of butterflies flying around. And like, listen, if any of you have any experience with uh, German short hair pointers, you know 
that they'll hunt anything, but they especially like hunting uh, butterflies, you know. Now you see right here, you see where like uh, Pippin's having a little bit of trouble with our dog walk? I expect that, you know, so I'm just going to be very patient. Come on, easy, very nice. So that little bobble there on the, on the dog walk, that tells me something. That goes in my journal. That's going to affect my expectations when we go to the farm later. Now watch here. As we walk up this slide, you see this hesitancy here, right? So I'm going to have to bring in uh, a little bit of, oh my gosh, you get off there. We know you can do it. There's another German short hair pointer named Jasper. Come on. So I'm going to have to help her a little bit here. Oh, because what happens is she gets right to this balance point and she starts thinking, oh my gosh, the world is falling. It's my job to teach her that I would never put her in a position. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jasper. Come on. I would never put her in a position where something bad would happen. Okay. Now, that's a learning experience, guys. Like you might, you might look there and you might say, Stoney, well, she was a little bit scared. Why'd you make her do it? That's the whole point of everything that we do here. We're a can-do kennel, not a can't-do kennel. And there's too much can't-do in the world as it is. You know, like your dog, it can't run, it can't exercise, it can't play with the other dogs, it can't go out until it's had 500 vaccinations, whatever. Well, we're really not into that can't attitude. We're into the can-do attitude, you know. So I put her in positions where she thinks she can't do it, and then I come back and I remind her, hey, this is a can-do kennel, and you can do it, and I would never ask you to do it if it's not going to work out to your you know, best advantage. So we're walking around, and stuff's happening. And look, see how she's pulling on the leash? Okay, so she pulls on the leash some. That's, that's, to be, that's to be expected out of a young dog. That just lets me know when I go over to the farm and I'm holding her leash, you know, I might not want to be holding a cup of coffee in the other hand. It's not a big deal, but it's something that I need to know about so that I don't get frustrated. I'm going to bring her up here and see if I can get her up on this elevated surface. She does good with that in case I need to get her to sit on the, you know, the tailgate of the truck or the back of the four-wheeler, acclimating her to being up off the ground. And see, she's going to get up there. Okay, no big deal. Again, it's given me information that I'm going to be able to use to set realistic expectations. Now look at Jax. He's already off and in the water. Let me get on the other side, Eli. Okay. Now look at Pippin. There's Jax. He's been here for a little while. Pippin's not been here for very long. You notice she's not going to go into that water, she thinks. I'm just going to help her. I'm just going to help her on down. Oh my gosh, and she survived. Look, nothing bad's happening to her. She might think something bad's going to happen, but she's going to start to realize that being in this water is a lot of fun. Okay? And that way when we go over to the pond, I don't have to introduce her to water for the first time at the pond. I've already introduced it to her here, and so we've kind of got that initial, uh, you know, that initial fear reaction out of the way. All right. Uh, so let's take, we'll, we'll switch from uh, Pippin uh, to Jax. What about you, Jax? Do you want to show off a little bit because you're a smarty? All right. Uh, now, you guys saw Jack in my uh, hemp farm video. Jax, is, uh, he's been here for a little while, so he's awesome, you know. And so what you'll notice with Jax, up, 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 is I get a lot better leash compliance. Easy. <clears throat> he seems to be a lot more sure-footed. Very nice. A lot more confident on the uh, obstacles. Very nice. Come on, buddy. I don't have to give him quite as many treats, although I still do like to give him lots of treats because he loves them, and I love him. Oh, so there's your little treat, buddy. Easy. Very nice. Now watch over here, especially, on this little foot placement drill. Up, 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 up. Watch how sure-footed. He hits every block. Easy. Wait. Has no trouble waiting. Has no trouble making his turn. Very nice. Easy. Slow off of there. Very nice. Now up the slide. Very nice. Now easy right here. And we're going to wait for the slide to transfer. Boom. Now that was kind of scary. So I'm going to give him a little treat. Very nice. Easy. Up the steps. Good dog. Down the steps. Easy. Very nice. Up. And we're going to have him wait for a second. Wait. Easy. So what is this telling me about what I can expect from Jax when we go out on a big adventure? Well, it's telling me that I can probably expect a very high compliance rate. Okay, so when I go out on my big adventure, 
the goals that I set for Jax, they're going to be more physically challenging and more mentally challenging than the goals that I set for Pippin, you know. That's why you have to have an objective evaluation of where your dog is, but you have to have a subjective set of metrics to determine if your dog is making progress or not. Different dogs make progress easy at different rates depending on the nature of the activity, their developmental stage, and their, uh, uh, their point in their training progression. You see, so Jax has been here for four weeks and he's a lab, so he's really easy to train, he loves food, he loves attention, he likes to fetch. And so basically, I mean, he's what we're looking to get all the time because he makes us look really good. Very nice. Easy. Good. So we got all of our obstacles with no problem. We only had to give two or three treats. I think we could come over here on our elevated surface. Up, up. Oh my gosh. We'll do a little sit and stay. And you never know when you're going to need your dog to sit and stay because you might have to go rescue. Oh, sit back down. Stay. You might have to go rescue a German short hair pointer. <laughs> oh, they can't get out of the pool. Okay, so Jax is doing perfect. Very nice. Oh my gosh. Uh, how about this? How about we take Jasper, who's also a German short hair pointer. We'll take him for a little walk. And uh, we'll take a... Come on, Jasper. Let's go, buddy. Have an objective evaluation of where he is with his trainer. Up, up. Oh, very nice. Easy. Good. Now, Jasper's been here. Wait. Easy. He's been here a little bit longer than Pippin. So you kind of see. <laughs> Just a minute ago, you were afraid to get on there. Hey, how about you get off there? Uh, Jasper's been here a little bit longer than Pippin. Oh, so he doesn't need quite as many treats. Oh, and he performs with a little bit more speed and precision. Very nice, Jasper. Come on, come on. Up, 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 up. Good boy. You can do it. Wait. Easy. Very nice. I like it. I like it when they get to the stage where you can walk them, guys, with uh, the leash hanging on your finger. That's kind of your always your ultimate goal as it relates to leash and collar work. Good. Wait. Easy. Very nice. You're so smart, Jasper. And you'll notice I'm not having to do much in the way of uh, giving them treats. So that's super cool. Very nice. You are a very good dog. Up, up, good. Let's go up for the lay frame. Good. Weight at the top. Easy. Very nice. Up, 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 up. Oh, very nice. We'll go over here and get on our elevated surface. See if we can't practice a sit stay. Up, up. Good boy. Sit, stay. Very nice. Get up there and look at him, Eli. Give him a good shot of a good looking dog. Dang, nice looking dog. Very good. Oh, yes. But now we're taking uh, Jasper over to the pond. <laughs> and so we'll see if we can't get Jasper to get in this water a little bit. And uh, you'll notice these labs jump right in there. A lot of times these German Shepherds do. Sometimes these uh, German short hair pointers can be a little bit on the I don't think so stage. Watch. Look, he's saying, <laughs> look, he's saying, I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, no. You're going to have to do it anyway, dude. Oh. <laughs> Look. Oh. Oh. What about you? Why don't you go in there and help him? Go in there and help him. Oh. <laughs> Poor Jasper. Jasper's like, dude, look. That's really not my cup of tea. Oh, look at this lab, though. He came right in here and went to swimming around. So I'll just get Jasper's leash. I'll kind of make him come down in here. Make him realize it ain't so bad. Now knock this out. You know, because I don't want to get over to the pond and have a bad experience. Good. I want him to have plenty of, it, you know, plenty of exposure to the water, you know, to how it feels, to get a little bit of flotation uh, before he, you know, actually gets into a real pond with all the different, you know, there's a lot of different things in a pond. Like in this, you know, I'm able to control this environment here. This is just a tub with water in it. In the pond, there's an ooey gooey mess of mud underneath the water. There's lots of smells, there's lots of wildlife, you know. Some spots are deep and some spots aren't so deep. Oh, you're very nice. Now look at Jax. Jax just runs right over here. Oh, gets in. And he's like, come on guys, it'll be fine. <laughs> and here comes Mr. No Name. Oh my God, he's such a good mentor dog. Very good. So all these labs are trying to, <laughs> are trying to convince Jasper that this is a party 
and Jasper's not having any of it. Oh, but he's gonna do okay. He's gonna do okay. We'll go ahead and get him out of there. Oh, all right. Who should we walk next, Eli? Oh, oh, you're good. Oh, get out of there, though. And I think you can get out on your own, but I'll go ahead and get you out. Ranger, come on. Come on, Ranger. Dog on our list is Ranger, young Malinois puppy. <laughs> Ranger's been with us a little while, so we don't really expect to have uh, much of any kind of problem as it relates to uh, doing our exercise with small challenges or the implementation of our vocabulary. Good boy, wait. Good, easy. Wait, let me put this uh, down. Very nice. Good boy. Easy. Now help him a little bit here, because Malinois can be a little bit sensitive. Uh, a lot of Malinois really actually go through these funny late-term fear periods. Guys, so if you're ever making good progress with your Malinois and all of a sudden they seem to uh, like uh, regress, don't worry about it. It'll go away in a couple of weeks usually. Not a big deal. Getting back to our one finger rule though, you see? Able to walk this dog with one finger. Wait. And so what does this tell me about, you know, my expectations for our small challenges? You know, I'm, it doesn't just tell me that I'm ready to go out for a general environmental socialization session. What it tells me is that I'm ready to go out into a high distraction environment. You know, one that's even got, uh, you know, some elements of danger like traffic in it, you know? So if I have a dog, sit and uh, he's really good on the leash, good vocabulary, good physical skills, good general environmental socialization, good impulse control, good attention span. Oh my gosh, very nice, like Ranger. Then I know that I shouldn't have any trouble going out into a real life situation, uh, like uh, an urban landscape, or maybe a, you know, a music festival, or a softball game, or something like that. Okay, now, uh, come on, you can do it. Now we might have a little bit of trouble getting him into this water, uh, just because, got to remember, that uh, different kinds of dogs have different behavioral conformations and they experience environments in different ways. Uh, so like you see those labs, the, they jump right off in here and uh, you know they're super happy in the water, they're always happy in the water. Uh, the German short hair is a little nervous. This dog, he got in here, but he's not super stoked about it. Like, look, I'm gonna be able to get him to come over here, but you're gonna see, and now listen, we've done this every day for a long time. You're gonna see that uh, he doesn't really love it, okay? So I can take him over to the farm, but he always stays out of the pond every time. Mr. No Name and Jax will be running around in the pond. Henry will be running around in the pond. And this dog just kind of runs around on the bank. Uh, a lot of times he just kind of goes and lays up by the truck and kind of guards the truck, just looks and sees what's going on. Uh, now, so we have another dog that we're taking on an adventure. Let me find her. Our next dog, Tasha, uh, German Shepherd. She's about the same age as Ranger, the Malinois. Good dog. Now, the good thing about these German Shepherds and Malinois is, you know, you don't have to show them things too many times to get them to understand what's going on. And then it really doesn't take much in the way of motivation, at least extrinsic motivation, to, to keep them doing the things you'd like for them to do. Uh, you know, what's tough with them? Uh, they're a little bit needy, of course, and they have a tendency to kind of think that they need to guard you against people that they don't need to guard you against. And that was Tasha's problem when she first got here. If you'll remember uh, from a video about three weeks back, like everybody that uh, came down the hill or everybody that was moving around, Tasha was like, rah, 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 rah. you know, if you're the neighbor and you're trying to move your trash can, there's Tasha. Rah, 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 rah. If you're a dog walking on the leash, there's Tasha. Rah, 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 rah. You just see that stuff out of German Shepherds all the time. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, people make a bigger deal out of it than what it is most of the time. Nine out of 10 times, all you need is a little bit of remedial socialization and those kind of problems go away. Just always remember, if you're gonna get a German Shepherd, that, you know, what's required to uh, socialize a German Shepherd is a lot different than what's required to socialize a lab. And not just socialization with people, but socialization with uh, other dogs, socialization with different environments and stuff. You know, they're just not super confident dogs naturally. And that's kind of what makes a dog a guard dog, right? Like if you were confident and you thought everybody was your friend, then why would you bark at them? So you always understand that, uh, you know, being a guard dog, oh my gosh, what are you doing? <laughs> being a guard dog, and uh, you know, having some confidence issues, they go hand in hand, okay? Let's see, we'll get her to sit here or lay down because she's a little bit tired. Uh, show them what a tired German Shepherd looks like, Eli. 
Good thing about a tired German Shepherd, though, is that they're not uh, barking at anybody or getting themselves into anything. Oh my gosh, how do you do with the pool? Come on. Oh, you'll notice Tasha goes right in the pool. <clears throat> we actually have more trouble you keeping Tasha out of the pool than we have getting her in it, which is uh, kind of weird because, like in a in a in a lot of ways, you know, things affect Tasha negatively. Like that teeter totter, man, it took us about 200 repetitions to get her to do that without, you know, without being a little bit worried. But this, we, as soon as we put the slide over here on this pool, man, she's just bam right down in here. Now Ranger, on the other hand, he's always done great with all his physical obstacles. But uh, you try to give in a pond, and I mean, he thinks that Jaws lives in there. He ain't going in that pond. He looks at he looks at Mr. No Name and at Jacks and at Henry, like when they're in the pool in the pond, like, hey, you guys are crazy. Uh, <laughs> you're going to get eaten by a shark. You know, you just never know. There's always these weird little uh, idiosyncrasies with dogs. Let's see what else we have. Hey, Hayden, come here, buddy. Here's Hayden. Hayden is a young adult. Oh, great Pyrenees mix. Very nice. Now, uh, <clears throat> talking about uh, having to be patient. When you're working with a dog like this, it's a great Pyrenees mix, you have to take into account that, uh, you know, great Pyrenees were not bred to do a complex job in conjunction with the handler, you know. They're kind of bred to hang out with sheep and make sure no predators came up and molest the sheep. Very nice. And so it takes you a little bit longer with a great Pyrenees or a great Pyrenees mix to establish a motivational base, you know. And, uh, a lot of times people will say, oh, well, those dogs aren't very smart. That's not that they're not very smart. It's just that uh, they kind of don't come pre-programmed caring about what you care about, you know? Like I'm out here doing uh, this stuff on the, uh, you know, on the agility equipment, and uh, Hayden, tend to, you know, he typically, he just kind of lays over there in the yard, and he watches, and he looks at us, and he's like, oh, yeah, that's nice, guys. Well, doesn't that make sense? Because that's what he does, uh, you know, in a field of sheep. They lay around and watch, and as long as nothing needs to be done, they really don't do anything, right? Uh, so, always when you're, you know, when you're thinking about going out on a big adventure and you're making that objective evaluation, uh, you know, uh, like I said, always be honest with yourself about your dog in terms of its developmental stage, the work you've put in, but also just uh, about its genetics. You know, what kind of dog is it? You know, like a dog's a genetic machine, and so it's going to have certain behavioral tendencies. Good. And uh, if you have expectations in line with those uh, genetic tendencies, then you're going to be happy. And you've, if you have uh, expectations that are not in line with those uh, uh, genetic tendencies, then you're probably going to be disappointed, uh, at least if you're not willing to put in a tremendous amount of work. All right, stay there. Let everybody see them. Pretty good looking dog. Very nice. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, what's the odds of this dog going in this pool, Eli? I'm swim <laughs> I don't even know if I'm big enough to make him get in here. Hey, come on, come down this slide, uh, this slide, dude. You <laughs> He's like, no, I don't think so. Let's see. Uh oh. Uh oh. He can do it. Dang. <laughs> Very nice. It's not so bad, is it, buddy? Oh, come over here and see me. Come over here and show him how happy you are. <laughs> Oh, it's not so bad. Very good. Oh, that's a very good dog. You see a lot of extra loving, a lot of extra attention. Good boy. Oh, let me get that leash off your face. I'm sorry. Good boy. Kind of splash a little water up on him. Just kind of let him get used to what's going on here. I don't expect this dog to be a retriever. I don't expect him to, you know, love getting in the water. But I don't want him to freak out. Like if we go over to the pond, I want him to be able to go over there and at least have a little bit of a good time. You know, he can get in the shallow end anyway. You know how you're, when you were a kid, all your, all your friends that couldn't swim very well, they kind of would hang out in the shallow end. Uh, we want this fella to at least be able to hang out in the shallow end while Mr. No Name and those guys are swimming across the whole lake. Very nice. Oh. All right, so here we have Bodie, big old charcoal lab. Oh my gosh, come on, buddy. Very nice. All right. So just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I made a video about silver labs. And so now that I have a charcoal lab in, I guess I ought to make a video about charcoal labs. One of the people in the lab world's favorite thing to do is tell other people that have Labrador retrievers what they do not know. <laughs> so I'll give them something to talk about. All right, now, but what we're talking about is setting realistic expectations. So you might look at a big dog like Bodie 
and say, okay, well, Stoney, he looks mature. He looks pretty physically strong. He seems to be a confident dog. You know, what's realistic expectations for him? Well, since he hasn't had a lot of experience in a wide range of uh, environments or social situations, we have to, to adjust our expectations downwards towards dogs that are at a different developmental stage. So theoretically, this dog at this developmental stage should be able to do everything that my dog, uh, Mr. No Name, can do but he can't, you know? And it wouldn't be fair for me to take Bodie on an adventure expecting him to behave like Mr. No Name because they haven't had similar life experiences. Come on, buddy, up, up, up. And you can see that pop up in everything. Uh, just watch him when he moves. He's not as sure-footed, he's not as outgoing, you know, his work ethic's not the same, his endurance level's not the same. He just hasn't had the life experiences that, uh, you know, or would maximize his physical and mental abilities. So when I go to setting goals for him, I have to take into account two things, like his developmental stage, which at his developmental stage, I mean, you guys see dogs out here all the time that are eight or nine months old that are doing awesome stuff. They're fetching like champs, they're working off the dummy launcher, they're riding ATVs, they're running for miles. I mean, they're just doing everything. And uh, so when I'm done with this guy, he'll be doing all those things too. But until I've had him for a few weeks and I've had a chance to do some remedial socialization with him, everything's going to have to be done with kid gloves. Uh, <clears throat> So, like, you know, there's Jax, and you saw how Jax, I was able to do the whole routine, and no problems, comes over here, gets right in the pool. Again, look at the hesitation on this dog. Uh, by this age, we would normally like to have him sliding right down the slide into the water, but if you can see, I don't know if it's going to come through on the camera, but if you can see in his body posture, there's some hesitation here. So I'm going to have to help him off in there. Good. Oh, let him know. Hey, that's not so bad. I have to run over here. Oh, good dog. Very nice. Good. We kind of walk him around in here. Let him understand what's going on. I'm going to move this slide out of the way. Oh. Walk this guy around the edge of the pool a few times. Get a few extra repetitions. And you might say, Stoney, well, why, you know, why didn't you walk those younger puppies around the pool like that? because I didn't really have to, you know. When the puppies are young, uh, then like each unit of labor that you put into socializing them or, or teaching them a, you know, a set of behaviors or uh, explaining to them a set of expectations for a given environment, uh, man, those repetitions, those sessions paid big giant dividends. So when you're dealing with an older dog, a pubescent or post-pubescent dog, it's not that you can't teach an old dog new, new tricks, it's just that it takes a, you know, it takes an inordinate amount of time to teach an old dog new tricks. Good. So whereas it takes me just a couple of minutes a day to uh, acclimate a, a 14 or 15 or 16 week old dog to this pool and then take them right over to the pond or the river and have them uh, swimming, we have to do it with Bodie multiple times each day. And uh, so the sessions each time are two to three times longer and we require two to three times as many uh, sessions per day to get them ready to go on the same size adventure as what this fella's going on here in about 10 minutes. Oh, very good. All right, now let's go on an adventure, Eli. All right, now it's time for a little farm time adventure. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of walk up this little road by the cornfield and let these dogs run and explore. I've got these young puppies and I've got uh, my dog, Mr. No Name. And so I kind of use Mr. No Name to keep these guys around, which is especially important uh, when you got these little short hairs because they kind of go and go and go. And if you don't watch out, you go out with these bird dogs and you'll look up and they'll be gone. And uh, sometimes it can be hard to, to get them back. But as long as you have a mentor dog to kind of lead the way, uh, they kind of have a tendency, not a 100% tendency, don't, don't, I don't want to mislead you, but they kind of have a tendency to stick fairly close to wherever that mentor dog is, wherever the older dog is. To keep them all interested, I might bring out a dummy for a little bit. Hey, just kind of uh, give them something to do, you know. You see how they're kind of charging or cha chasing uh, Mr. No Name here. Another thing this does is it uh, burns a little of that energy off of them real quick. 
and so I don't have to, you know, kind of worry about that initial impulsiveness. You know, kind of, kind of when you take a, when you take kids to the amusement park, when you first get to the amusement park, man, they're going and going and touching and grabbing and wanting to play every game, and and uh, just they're hard to manage, right? It's the same thing with dogs. So when you first uh, start your big adventure, you know, then just burn a little bit of that energy off right off the bat, and you won't have too much trouble. Another thing, if they start to get distracted a little bit and you bring your retrieving item into play, it'll, you know, like refocus them, redirect them, they call it. But they seem to be doing pretty good. I'll let them run around in that wood line a little bit if they want to. I'm going to practice calling them every so often with the whistle. Now this is my nice talking whistle. Oh, good dogs. Oh, and they come over here and tell them appreciate it. I appreciate it. And then these two nerds that didn't come. I do not appreciate you not coming. And I do not appreciate you not coming. Get. Come on, dogs. Kind of keep exploring. Having a good time. Now, one of the things that uh, these... Uh, one of the things that these... German short hairs really like about coming over here is there's so many butterflies and uh, they just chase and chase and chase those butterflies like crazy. Like you can see them. Now over here in this pond is about a million frogs. So don't be surprised if uh, they jump off in that pond after those frogs. And come on, give it, cut me a break and do not send me a million emails about the blue green algae. You know, I, I listen to NPR too, so I know about that. Now see, they've gotten a little far away. Call them. Oh, good dogs. I appreciate that fast recall. Yes, I do. You're very smart. You're very smart. All right, we'll walk just to the end of this road. And then uh, once we get over to where the hemp field is, we're going to turn around and come back this way because I don't want them messing around over there. Those hemp plants are still pretty small. You saw that in that uh, hemp video that I showed you the other day. They're only about yay big. and So uh, these dogs, they can't hurt, hurt uh, that corn at the stage it's in, but we don't want them fooling around in the hemp field. So we're just going to go a little ways down here. Then we'll turn around and we'll go back uh, to the pond and we'll do some uh, we'll do some kayak work and some retrieving work in the water. Yeah, you know, we could do Eli. We could go ahead and head down, uh, head down this way a little bit, and uh, let them get a get, let it little, let them get a little bit in the brush. Go ahead and go back down that way so you can see me back up through there, and I'll bring these dogs through, and we'll go around this little bit of a tree line. Right. So now we're going to go off into this shady tree line a little bit. Let them investigate a bunch of different kinds of smells here, and there's rabbits running around and stuff. Gotta just let them hang out. Have a good time, see what's up. There's a big old butterfly right there. Get a recall exercise in. Good, good. What are you doing, Jasper? You tired? Now we kind of run down through here. And you can see, guys, this is just a perfect uh, environmental socialization spot. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, Eli, go ahead and uh, back on up that way a little bit. Watch out, you're going to kind of go into a little swag there. I'll call these dogs back this way so you guys can see kind of what they're doing. You know, what I want you to notice is how they kind of hop and bound and, uh, you know, they, they really make use of this space. And this is not a, a super large space right here. Uh, you know, you find these kind of things. You don't have to be in the middle of a giant farm like I am. There's all kinds of in urban areas, just little spots that are grown up. And you want to get in those grown up spots because when you're in those grown up spots, that's where the most variety of plant life and animal life and insect life is. And you guys, I hope you can see Pippin running around here. See how crazy these dogs get. So I'll walk up here through this grass. Good. Now I'm going to kind of take a little detour and I'm going to come over here and go from the grass kind of into these different types of weeds. Now the one thing, <laughs> look at this, the one thing you want to watch out for is if you have uh, allergens, allergies, you know, when you get your dog out and this kind of stuff, zoom in over here Eli so you can see all this stuff. 
you get all this stuff here, you know, like uh, your dog gets all this on them. And then when they come in your house, they're going to spread these allergens all over your house. So if you, uh, you know, if you have bad allergies or somebody in your house has bad allergies, then think about what you're doing. And when you come home, I like to take a force dryer and blow all the pollen and, and, and dander and uh, excessive environmental stuff off the dogs. Uh, but you can also just give them a quick bath with the hose even. Just kind of spray them off. Good. Very nice. Now, always remember what I say about from your dog's perspective. See, I'm not very tall, so you can see these weeds. Uh, they're about chest level on me, but the weeds are, are three times as tall as the dogs are. So from their perception, you know, all they can see in front of them is just a giant wall of weeds, and it forces them to use their other senses. Very nice. Call them to me. Oh, good dogs. And here they roll up out of there. Very good, Pippin. Very good, Jax. Oh, very good, Jasper. Okay, now we'll head back down. We'll go to the pond. Get back up here on this road a little bit, Eli. <clears throat> you can go on up there a ways. Tell me where, like, uh, you want me to be. You just maintain that distance that you want so you can watch us walk. Get back up on that road. Dun, 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 dun. Pippin! Oh, dang, very nice. Now some of these short hairs uh, come a little better than other ones. And Pippin has really surprised me because she hasn't been here very long at all. And uh, she's pretty dang trustworthy off the leash. Now, you see what I'm talking about over here? Can you see what's going on right here, Eli? See how this dog is, uh, she's kind of laid down here in the shade? Uh, well, I need that for the next part of this uh, session. I'm fixing to go back to the pond, and I'm going to get the kayak out, and I'm going to get them in the kayak. And so, uh, you know, how do I want them to be when I put them in the kayak? I want them to be calm. And what makes a dog calm? tired. I mean, you hear me say it in every video. A tired dog is a good dog. A tired dog stays well. A tired dog stays still well. A tired dog has good manners. You know, I know you get tired of hearing it, but guys, listen, I build my whole business on making dogs tired. And you saw that right there, you know. These, uh, these short hairs come over here and they run these other dogs in the ground. So if you've done a good enough exercise session to make a short hair tired, then you've done a pretty dang good exercise session. Now see, they're getting out their way. You can't see where they are, but I don't like uh, how far they're getting. I'm going to call them back to me. Come on. Come on. Oh, very nice. Here comes No Name leading the way. You see how he kind of led the way, and Pippin just followed right along behind him. Again, you know, reiterating the point of how important it is to have a solid mentor dog. Pippin. Oh, my gosh. Very nice. Now, if you can see it as Pippin comes towards you, I'll do it again so you can be looking. Uh, go on, Pippin. You see our tongue's hanging out. Remember what I say about the tongue. Pippin, come on. The tongue, see this right here? Okay, when their tongue's hanging out like that, watch out, no name. Oh, when their tongue's hanging out like that, that's what we call a fatigue meter, you know. That lets you know a dog's getting a little fatigued, and that's when it's a great time to practice anything related to being still, like riding in a boat, or practicing manners, or even really practicing, you know, loose leash walking. A lot of people are always asking me about, Sony, what, what's the best method for teaching loose leash walking and stuff? And it really just boils down to your situation. Uh, if you'll walk your dog far enough, <laughs> you can teach them loose leash walking with anything, you know? Because they get tired. They get too tired to pull. I would say that's probably the biggest thing that people misunderstand when they come to the kennel. What's the first thing they want to do at the kennel, Eli? Oh, get to the shade. They want to get to the shade. The people are worse than the dogs, you know. People watch my videos. They see me walking dogs, walking dogs, walking dogs. <laughs> And they come to the kennel, they'll go around the, you know, around the course once or twice and up the hill once. And they're like, hey, let's practice stay. <laughs> they'll say, hey, Stoney, what should we work on next? And I'm like, next? What are you talking about? You know, uh, what you should work on is doing it again. 
you know so don't say next say again all right now we got the kayak out and we're gonna let these labs uh you know kind of encourage these german short hair pointers to join the pond party you know kind of leave my kayak right there for a second <laughs> and look at jasper jasper's already said uh i'm not sure if i want to get in that pond or not now basically whenever you see a little bit of uh, resistance at the kennel to getting in the pool then you know that you're in for a lot of resistance when you go out into a real uh, body of water like a creek or a river or a lake or like a pond like this because there's just it's what happens is the dogs get subject to a, a thing called uh, uh, stimulation overload they just get overloaded with all the noises and sights and sounds and whatever and they kind of have a tendency to freeze up which is kind of what you're seeing with jasper here he's just like oh no it's too much i can't do it but we're going to show him that he can do it first our first strategy is going to be to get mr no name to go out here and fetch and hopefully these other dogs will see it and they'll kind of jump in there with them and if not uh then we'll just uh wade out here with them and uh, make it happen because ultimately, guys, remember what we're after. You know, we're after developing dogs that understand that dealing with adversity builds strength. What do you think, Pippin? Now, Pippin's got her old rotten stick over here. Now, here comes Jax. He's thinking about it. And look, when Jax come out here, now, uh, now Jasper has took a couple of extra steps. Come on, Pippin. Go see what these guys are doing. Now, Pippin's taking a few steps. And then I'm going to move out here just a little farther, see if I can get Jax to come with me, or Jasper to come with me. Now look, see how this works? Just, you know, try to concentrate on making a, just a little bit of improvement each session. And then, like, even within your session, start with a, you know, start with a baseline. Oh, start to try to improve on what you're getting. Oh, and here it goes, here it goes, look. They're starting to figure it out. Oh, very nice. Now this German short hair style swimming, it doesn't look too pretty. <laughs> but we'll take it, won't we, Eli? <laughs> look at Jasper back there. He's like, uh, nope, not getting in any deeper. Good boy. Very nice. And this is where having a really well-conditioned retriever comes into play because I know I can trust Mr. No Name to go out there however many times that I need him to go out there. Now look, Jax has went out there with him. Oh, and I'm going to take a couple of more steps out here and kind of drag Jasper with me. Uh, and now notice what I'm not doing. See, Jasper's back here and he's being hesitant. Notice I'm not babying him, making over him. You know, I'm not going to pay him attention for, uh, you know, being not confident. That's a big mistake people make. It's like the grandma problem, right? You know, what, what do kids do when they fall off the bike in front of their grandma? They cry because their grandma cares. You know, what do the kids do when they fall off the bike in front of their big brother? They suck it up and get back on their bike. So if I've got a dog back here and he seems worried or, you know, whatever, as much as I can, I just kind of let him, you know, let him work through it on his own. Good, Pippin's doing pretty good. So here we're gonna go out here a little bit farther with Jasper. Come on, Jasper, you can do it. Very nice. Now Jasper is basically up to the buoyancy point, right? His, uh, uh, he's, he's got to the point where like the water starts surrounding his chest cavity and the air in his chest cavity makes his body want to float. So I just needed to get him just a few more steps and he's actually gonna swim a little bit. And then I'll let him swim out this way and I'll turn him around and make him realize that whenever he's uh, buoyant, whenever he's floating, all he's got to do is look at something and move his feet, and that's, the, that's where he'll go. So I'm going to move him out here, get him to floating and turning around, and then I'm going to let him, uh, I'm going to kind of steer him. Come here. I'm going to kind of steer him so that he uh, can make it back to the bank. Come on, Jasper. Good. Good boy. Now he's swimming. And I'm going to let him swim back to the bank. Very nice. I'm going to take one little bit more trip out here, and I am going to kind of make him do it, but I think it's going to be good for him in the long run. Get him out here past his natural buoyancy point. Now he is swimming. He's doing a good job swimming. I'm going to make him come all the way around. Oh. Good. I'm going to turn him around, let him realize that all he has to do is look at something and start moving his feet and if he looks at something and starts moving his feet 
uh, he will be able to locomote and reach his objective. So one more time. Now I want you to notice that he is not thrilled about this, but I know it's going to lead to a lot of fun in the future, and so that's why I'm challenging him like this. He's swimming. Good. Now all he's got to do is look and move his feet. Dang. What about that for a nice successful repetition, Eli? Pretty good work. All right. Now these guys are, give me, hey, give me that back, dude. So I'm going to put my dummy up now. Kind of got these dogs used to being in the water. Now I'm going to drag my kayak out in the, in the pond. And this way, what I did was I kind of made them understand that when they're in the water, it's not a big deal. If they have a problem, all they have to do is look at the bank and move their feet and, and they'll be safe in a few seconds. So now when I move the kayak out there and I start getting them in the kayak, they don't have to panic because they know, you know, if they fall off, they can either wait and get back in the kayak with my help or they can point their face towards the bank and move their feet and uh, they'll be safe in just a few seconds. What you'll notice after a few trips like this is the dogs, they really get excited about these new kinds of challenges. Oh, look at that. Ain't that perfect? Oh, come on, Jax. Now my kayak is a little bit hot, so I'm gonna make sure to splash some water up there. Oh, come on, Jax. Oh, get up there. <laughs> look at Jasper. <laughs> Jasper says, look, I've had enough. <laughs> oh, and this is part, listen, this is part of your training, guys. You know, like whenever you're raising kids and dogs, you're trying to make them have a good time. But let's, let's all be honest. There's a lot of things in life that just have to get done, you know, and whether or not they seem fun in the moment, you have to be able to set rules and set an agenda and have dogs and children follow that agenda, you know. Come on, Jax. Oh. Where are you guys going? Oh. Very nice. Get up there, dude. <laughs> uh. Okay. So you know how I'm always telling you, you know, when you go out, you need to have a good, uh, you have, a, have to have a good set of clear expectations as to what's going to constitute a successful session. Well, I got these dogs in the water and they're swimming. I thought that was pretty awesome. And uh, look, this dog's falling out. We just put him back in there, make him realize that's not such a big deal. But look, I got these dogs in the water. They were swimming, having a pretty good dog time. Jasper was swimming, uh, maybe not so much having a good time. Now what I kind of want is I just want him to, you know, get up here and sit still for a little while. And that's going to be easier for some of the dogs than others. And this is, brings up a good point too. You know, like uh, sometimes you'll feel like something's not fair. You know, maybe it's not fair in your own life or maybe you feel like it's not fair in the dog's life. Like right here, you can see that Jax and Jasper could ride in this kayak and, uh, you know, really not have much trouble because they're being nice and calm. And there's Pippin. She's being kind of crazy <laughs> and knocking everybody around. Okay, well listen, that's just how life works. You know, a lot of times you're on a team and, uh, you know, somebody on that team is a little bit of a wild character. Well, I mean, you just can't kick them off your team. You have to all learn to work together. So now what's really important here to me is that I get these dogs to calm down and just settle and ride in the kayak without knocking around. Good. Now, you know where I was saying, you know, having a mentor dog is a good thing? Well, you see how, like, while No Name is swimming around, he's keeping uh, Pippin kind of tore up. So I might ought to try, might ought to try to go ahead and get No Name in here. Ugh. That way, I got all my eggs in this one basket. Good. Easy. Maybe I can calm all these guys down. So one of the things that you're going to notice that I do is uh, kind of the level of my voice drops. I start dra you know, drawing out my words a little bit. 
Easy. Not really trying to micromanage here. It's more like I'm just being an emotional leader and showing the dogs by, you know, my own actions that we're trying to calm down. A big mistake from my point of view here in a situation like this is to get to fussing too much, like stay, 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 something like that, you know, or sit, sit, sit. I really don't care what posture these dogs get in to be still, uh, as long as they'll be still, be calm and quiet. Very nice. Hey, dude, chill out. Relax. Nice. Now I'm starting to get what I want. Good. Good dogs. Very nice. Just kind of like being a kindergarten teacher, you know, managing these personalities. Some of them calm down more quickly. Good. Kind of like I always say, basically, the dogs that are doing good at doing the active stuff, you know, they're not as good at doing the passive stuff. And then the dogs that are good at doing the passive stuff, they're generally not as good at doing the active stuff. Now see, I got one that, you know, got out of the kayak there. All he's gotta do is swim to me, and I'm gonna help him. Again, that's a big life lesson right there, guys. Listen, if you get yourself in a little trouble, if you get yourself in a little trouble, just get back to Uncle Stoney, ah, and he'll get you squared away. Eli, we might have to fast forward through this part. <laughs> it might be dark before these guys get settled. Hey, dude. <laughs> we might be here till, <laughs> till Christmas time. Come on, get in there. Get in there. Hey, come on. Good. If you would settle down, you know, everybody would quit falling out of the boat. You are the primary driver of the boat falling. Good. See, it got one, two, three, perfectly calm, and one, just like a little kid trying to take a nap that can't get settled. So I'm just gonna kind of rock them. Let them relax. Good. Now, remember what I talk about, about, uh, you know, focus on making incremental improvement. Uh, you know, I might just have to settle for this right here, being as calm as this dog's going to get today, and call it a victory. What do you think, Eli? Should I give it another minute? Another minute. All right, we'll give it another minute. We're going to sit here and be real chill and real calm and real quiet. But three out of four is not bad. <laughs> Dang, nice. What's it been, Eli? About 20 minutes? About 20 minutes. All right, guys, I've been standing in this pond for what seems like forever. And I was just about to get out a minute ago, you know, when I said I got one, two, three, three out of four that are calm and quiet. And, and uh, that's pretty good for a session. And it's very important to, like, to, set you, to make reasonable goals and, and like, just work towards uh, incremental progress towards reaching those goals. But then, right as I started to walk towards the bank, I thought to myself, well, what kind of lesson am I really teaching there? In all of these videos, you always hear me talking about dog training ultimately just boils down to consistency, patience, and perseverance. And I thought, well, one way or another, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. You know, I'm not going to tell you guys to be consistent, to be patient, and to always persevere when I'm not willing to. And I thought, I mean, what's the, what's the worst that can happen? You know, like uh, I have to sit out here for a few minutes until these dogs get nice and calm and quiet and settled. Uh, so I just made up my mind that I was going to do it. And look what I've ended up with. I've ended up with four super quiet, super calm dogs just chilling in the kayak. This one short hair is a little bit chilly because she's been in the water and she's not quite used to it. But everybody else is just hanging out. You know, and this is what I wanted. And by being consistent, patient, and being willing to persevere, I got everything I wanted out of my training session today. 
All right, so now I'm gonna take them back to the bank and they can go run around and uh, you know warm back up and we'll end up with a little bit of fetching and everybody will be happy. All right, see you guys later. Come on, dogs. Now we're fixing to go on a big urban adventure and uh, take uh, Tasha and Ranger. But Mike wanted to see it one time in person, you know, because he had tried it a couple of times. And listen, guys, this is a, come on, come on. It's a lot easier when you're watching it than it is when you're doing it. Ain't that right, Mike? That is correct. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this dog to walk and, uh, you know, stay close to us as we navigate these obstacles with the least, um, least amount of uh, leash input as possible. So ideally, I would like to be able to walk the dog with this one finger here like this. Oh, you're so smart. Easy, very nice. And of course, the very first thing that happens when you give somebody a leash is uh, they start wanting to use it and they have a tendency to overuse it. And so a lot of your leash problems, guys, just comes from the fact that it's kind of a, oh, it's kind of a reaction on the dog's part to being overdriven. You know, you know how like kids are when they first get their driver's license, they're like really, they're steering a lot and they're hitting the gas and the brake a lot. And then over the course of time, you just kind of learn to relax. Well, uh, so when I'm walking these dogs, Mike, I'm just kind of relaxed. You know, I mean, I know worst thing's gonna happen. She's not gonna get it right. I'm gonna have to do it again. I mean, okay. I do it, you know, I do 30 of these dogs a month. So you can imagine how many, uh, uh, this, how many times a day this happens. Up, up. So as I'm walking, I, all the time I'm trying to do this, this right here. See, I've got this leash kind of on my finger. If I start having trouble, she starts lagging or forging a little bit. Come on, up, 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 up. My first inclination is to use my vocal inflection or my postures to get her moving instead of the leash. And at your stage, your first inclination, up, up, is to actually use the leash. Easy. Very nice, but I mean, I, I allow a, you know, a pretty wide degree of latitude as it relates to where she's at on my left side. I got a real simple rule. She has to be on the left side and she can't cross my center line and she can't pull rudely. But if she ends up a little ahead of me or a little behind me, you know, who cares? What's, what's the big deal? So when we go out, just keep that in mind. Don't try to micromanage. Okay. Use the leash like you use a seat belt in a car. It's there for safety. Mike. Up, up, up. Very nice. Easy, very nice. Now weave your way in between those grasses. Body awareness drill, we're just trying to teach her. Don't be knocking into stuff when you're out walking. That's perfect, very nice. All right, foot placement drill on the blocks. See if she gets every one. Three, four, very nice, easy, good. Very nice. Now easy off of there. And wait down there while I fix this teeter-totter for you. Good. Up, up, up. Now pause at the balance point and help her. Very nice. All right. Up, up, up. Come on, up, up, up. Very nice. Get a little excited. Up, up, up. up, up. Perfect. Up, up. Easy. Now wait. Good. Now easy off of there. Up, 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 up. Good. Easy. Slow her down here because it's a... She needs to have her wits about her. She's up off the ground. Good girl. Good girl. Easy. Very nice. Up, 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 up. Very nice. There you go. Easy. Good. Over all three jumps. Up, up, up. Very nice. Up. There you go. Last jump. Good. Now, onto the table. Up, up. Come on. And now we're going to do sit and stay. Now give her a little hand action there. Tell her stay. So now if you go to rubbing on her while you're trying to get her to stay, it's going to make it hard. Now you can go ahead and walk away from her. Just throw your leash on it. Eli, back up a little bit. Show them like a, give them some contacts. Go out in the yard and show them. Like so. so she, Mike, you can go ahead and go a ways away from her. It's okay if she lays down. There you go. Good. All right. Now you can go back over there to your dog. And then go down the slide into the water. See if you have any trouble with that. The dog should trust you, no matter what you're asking them to do. Easy. Good girl. Yeah, there you go. Very nice. Just kind of walk her around in there. Oh. So look, take it and put her up there again. Let's come. Good girl. There you go. Up, now up, up. up. Good. Up, up, up. Now down the slide, 
and then kind of walk her around the edge uh, so that she gets, you know, quite a bit of uh, submersion. Easy. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Very nice. Good. And remember what we're trying to do here. We're trying to put them in situations where they might think something's not a great idea. And uh, you show them that uh, they kind of got to do it anyway. You know, any idea that you have, they need to put over in the good idea category. And go ahead and just kind of walk around there a little bit. There you go. Perfect. Very nice. What do you think, Eli? Is Mike ready to go out on a real world adventure? I think so. I think he'll be all right. All right. All right, you can get her out, Mike. That's pretty good. Okay, so Mike wanted to see it one more time before we headed out on our adventure. Come on, Ranger. Let's go. Now, this is what I'm talking about, guys. All that's going on here, easy, very nice, up, up, is I'm trying my best to use my body posture and my vocal inflection, easy, to control the dog so I don't have to pull on the leash very much. You know, every day you should strive to use the leash less and less. Okay, a good way to think about it is you want to train with the idea that at some point in your life you're going to get to the point where you don't need a leash. Wait. And so, like, see how I've got that hanging on there? I need, every day, I need to move towards my ultimate goal of being able to walk the dog off the leash. And having a dog that can walk with the pressure of the leash on one finger is getting me pretty close to that ultimate goal. Easy. Very nice. Up, up, up. Gonna help him out here. Oh, very nice. Up, up. Good boy. Up, up, up. Very nice. Easy. Good. And you'll see, like, here and there, like, you'll see me, like, squeeze my hand or, or put my fingers together, Mike, where I'm giving a little bit of input through the leash. Wait. But most of the time, you'll notice I'm just using these kind of uh, big, gross body movements, you know. Easy. Very nice. Up, up. Very nice. Up. Good. Up. Watch, here, right here, like an usher. Easy. Very nice. Slow down. Wait. Easy. You see how big that motion is? Now, over the course of time, that motion will become smaller because the, the dog's ability to discern what I want becomes more, more refined. Watch, watch. Again, this usher movement. Up, up, up. Wait. Right here. You see? And so I just I can have him jump up there and wait. I can put a little bit more pressure on him. Sit. See, I put a little bit more pressure on him, and I can put a little bit more pressure on him and make him go all the way over into a down position. Okay. So always remember, like it's not so much what you say, it's how you say it. So here we are up by the interstate at a construction zone, and what we're going to do is we're going to try to put our formal obedience work, our yard work, where we established our vocabulary and we established some basic physical skills on my small challenges course, we're gonna to try to put that to test in a real world environment. Okay, so y'all follow me and Mike around. All right, Mike, go ahead, buddy. Very nice. So as we're walking, we're just kind of looking for things to get into, you know? You can see they've got these big uh, concrete barriers up here to keep people from pulling off of the bypass onto the parking lot. Good. And these things, uh, I think they might have just put them here for me to have a real world agility course because we use them all the time. Up. Very nice. Easy. You can jump on them. Up. Very nice. You can use them to walk around. Oh, Major, look here. Very nice. So we can walk around them like this. Good boy. We can have a dog up, sit, and stay there. I'm going to walk around kind of in a circle here. Oh, now that was really good, so he deserves a treat. Oh, and look what somebody's left over here for me, Eli. Oh, they left me up. Bored. Dang. Nice. They think of everything around here. Up. <laughs> look at that, Mike. Good boy. You want to come see if your dog can do that board? All right. Up. I might have to come back here and help Mike, so I'll put Ranger over here and make him stay. Good girl. Dang, Good girl. dang, victory, victory. Very nice. That's awesome. Uh, up, up. 
Okay, Mike, you can go ahead and start, way, start weaseling your way around there. Now, sometimes, guys, like when you're out doing, uh, you know, when you're out doing real world uh, challenges, your dog's going to want to do one thing and you're going to want to do another. It's super important that you make the dog realize that, the, you know, what you want comes first. Right? It's not that you're not going to get a chance to do what they want, but you've got to do what the, what the handler wants first. This is where all your real life or liability comes from. You go out, don't wait for a situation to pop up where you really need a dog to mind in a high distraction environment without practicing first. Let's go. Very nice. We're just going to kind of saunter on down here. Oh, good boy, Ranger. Good boy. And there's workers over here doing all kinds of stuff. Cars coming. Very nice. <laughs> You're so smart. Good boy. Now as we're as we're as we're making progress, look, moved into some tall grass. All of this stuff, guys, is preparing your dog for any eventuality. You know? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make dogs. Like, we're trying to make them bulletproof, really. We're trying to make sure that they understand that uh, there's nothing in life that we're going to get into that they can't handle without, you know, with our help. Oh, very nice. You like jumping? Up, up. Very nice. Oh, you're a good dog. You sure are a fine adventure animal. Good boy. Easy. Very nice. Easy. Very nice. Easy. Good boy. Oh my gosh. Very nice. Come on. Up. Oh, you are such a sweetie. All right. So now we've knocked out the easy stuff. But what Mike didn't realize is the whole reason that we brought him up here is a little initiation we do with guys that come out to my kennel that think they're in pretty good shape. Show them our initiation hill, Eli. All right, now for Mike to become an official student in good standing and show us that he fully embraces the concept of exercise with small challenges, he and his dog have to get to the summit of that hill right there, okay? You up for that challenge, Mike? Up for that challenge. All right. Let's see if you can do it. Come on, girl. Come on. What do you think, Eli? Three tries? Three tries. At least hey. three tries. It's going to at least take him three tries. He's never getting up there in one. He's Look, he's road. struggling. I'll be dang. He's going to get it, dude. Ha! Huh. Hey, that's pretty good. Ha, <laughs> You did it. You did it in your first try, Mike. That's uh, hey, that's uh, that's pretty dang good. We were thinking you would take at least three tries. <laughs> what am I gonna do, Eli? I thought uh, I thought it would take take him at least three. Uh, I can't let Mike show me up on my own channel, so I guess I'm gonna have to do it with Ranger too. Come on, Ranger. Oh my gosh. Come on, buddy. Come on, come on. Up, up, up. Oh. Oh, very nice. Come on, come on. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, come on. Up. Oh, don't be a cheater. There you go. Good boy. Victory. What do you think, Mike? We got five. Now the hard part <laughs> is getting down without falling. Okay? So we're going to have to slide down the hill. Dang. Nice. There you go. And here we go. Ready? Got to slide down the hill. Whoa! Dang. Goat level. Goat level work. Dang. All right, Mike, now we got to get through this tunnel. Oh. Come on. Oh, no. Ah. <laughs> Oh, Eli, I'm getting old. I'm going to have to put Eli on this side of the camera. Good. All right, Mike, so the dogs are getting tired, and tired dogs stay well. So we're going to end our session with just a moving stop and stay, right? So we're going to come over these barriers. They're going to hop up on the barrier, and then we're going to suddenly tell them to stay. Stay. 
Now we practice, uh, we practice stop and stays like that all the time, and we don't really care what posture they're in. That's just kind of a safety thing. Uh, and uh, the reason that we do it is just when you're out in urban environments, you never know what's going to happen traffic-wise, you know. So the most important thing to do is get them to stop and stay there and await further instruction. We don't care whether they stop and stand or stop and sit or stop and lay down. We can work on that later. But for these five, six, seven months old puppies, what we have to have is a good stop, look, and listen uh, on cue. All right, guys. Very nice. Very smart, guys. Oh, my gosh.